Hello and welcome. This is Kuto Sound and I'm Bjorn Jacobson. This here is Y Series and today we're going to be talking a little bit about dual RTBC switches. Um, to begin with, just an RTBC switch, but let's um, let's see what we can do if we have two of them. Now, um, this is a true story. I've worked on a game at one point where I was asked to do the sound for it. Um, they found out some point in their production that um, that they there's the current sound that they had was not good enough uh, so they wanted me to do it it was a pretty big game and they wanted like uh, all, all the stuff done in, in about one month um, and it quite quickly became clear that their their coders were pretty stressed out for the rest of the period so I couldn't really ask for much coding help and what they had been using was that they've been using wise and they, they were using um, just one event and they had one uh, RTPC just as I've actually shown in the previous previous episodes here. Um, uh, and and what I was kind of looking for was because it was it was going to be very interesting if we had a small transition between the different types of running states and that's what we're going to do now. So, all they gave me was this um, play event. I can't remember what it was called in that game, but let's just call it play FS because that's for footsteps. And we have these switches we don't need. We don't didn't have those. So we only have player movement speed as we have also talked about in the previous episodes. So let's start from scratch here. The first thing that I did was to create a switch. And in this switch, I would just call it movement type. And the thing is that over here, instead of instead of creating these switch hierarchies to begin with, then you can, and instead of setting the switch with events or from the game, because they didn't have time to do that for me, um, I created these. Let's say here we are walking and we are running. And we also have sprint. Now, how do we switch between these if we don't have any switch incoming from our game? Now, the th simple thing is that you can click here on the actual switch container. Well, well actually on the um, game sync um, switch here. Use game parameter. And the game parameter that we want to use is the one called player movement speed. And as you can see, then this here can be altered to then say what should the switch can what should the switch state be switch state what should the switch value be if this rtpc is of a certain value so let's say we're sprinting when we're above eight yeah sprinting when we're above eight and we are running when we are above five there you go five and the rest of the time we'll be walking now, one of the problems in this situation became that what if um, the, the the transition between these became a little too abrupt? It would be a really cool detail to um, to um, to switch between these. So, but let's let's start off by actually switching like this. So, over here in our actor mixer hierarchy, we're both going to be creating a switch container. We will call it uh, movement type. It's really important sometimes to have a naming convention because once you get several layers of switches, let's say this is movement type and we only need one extra layer to, to do this. But if you have several layers of switches, it can get pretty hairy to figure out which switch does, does what. So having a naming convention like, let's say this is movement type and then the next one could be called uh, movement type underscore transition and so on. So that to, to make sure that you want, you can quickly see what is coming next. So in here, in our switch, we select our switch group, and we let's say walk is our standard, um, and let's let's put in some assets. I've made these run, sprint, uh, walk, run, but these are these are they don't necessarily sound good. I just made these real quick in Cubase just to make sure that, that there is a that there are these transition files, but we only have one RTPC, so we don't know. What is the transition? What what was what is the current state? We know that we are either walking, running, or sprinting because of the one RTPC, but we don't know what state were we in before when it's moving, and that's where it comes in with the duels. But to begin with, we're just going to drag and drop all these over here into movement type and say we want them to be a random container. Here, so we have a, our system here, and we're going to say run, 
and sprint and walk. These are, this is sprint. As you can see, the switch here, there is nothing here in the switch because I'm not manually setting the switch. I'm actually changing the RTPC, which then sets the switch uh, for me. So let's say this is walking and it would change at five. So let's say 5.5, .5. this is running. And after eight, it's, it's sprinting. So now our RTPC is determining what the switch value should be. Now, but we would also like these, um, I've made these special, special cases here. Let's say this is run to sprint and this is walk to run. Just to get like one, one or two sounds in, um, in there that can sort of like determine um, the current, the, the, um, determine what, what, what state were we in before when we're going to the next one. So what I asked for was an exact copy of this player movement speed here. And RTPC named the same thing. It received the same value. That was pretty easy for their coder to do. So let's say here, just call it player movement speed two. It has the same thing here, but it has a slew rate of about, the, which means that one, every time the, um, the parameter value changes, it's gonna take it a couple of, um, it's going to take it some time to get there uh, instead of actually just um, just switching to it immediately. So let's say here, um, two seconds? Yeah, just two seconds, which means that once we switch between walk and run, our normal switch here will be set from walk to run, but then this one will for two seconds actually still be walking. So that we can use. So over here in our movement type, we're gonna say walk or run. And we're going to replace all these and then say, gonna add a switch here that's gonna be called walk. But we can't do that. Walk switch. If I could spell switch, that would be great. And another switch container here called run switch and a third one called sprint switch oddly enough so this one here will now decipher are we going to play the normal run sound or are we going to play the the uh, in between one we create a duplicate of the movement type switch here called movement type transition as you can see, it then does the same thing, but the RTPC that we're using is going to have, here we are, it's going to be using the other value that we gave it. So, and this has a slew rate of two seconds, meaning that first we determine what are we doing right now? Are we running, walking, or sprinting? But afterwards, it will also determine were we, were we running, walking, or sprinting before? So over here in our switch container, we now make a sprint switch after our movement type here. So this here, the first one, determines are we walking, running, or sprinting? The next one, let's say the sprint switch here, determines movement type transition, and it determines sprint, walk, or run as well. But I've put the run to sprint box in here. We can also say we put the walk to run in here as well. And we make walk to run like this. So now we have walk and run and sprint. The only one that plays actually sprint is the one that's also called sprint here. If this RTPC and this switch is in any of the other states, it will play the walk to run or the run to sprint. Uh, meaning that if we are walking and suddenly start sprinting, then for two seconds, it will play the walk to run um, container instead. So like this, and if we change our movement speed, 
this one should come down within two seconds. And if we go back, then for the two seconds, it will play the other one. This is, this is a pretty rough simulation of how it's going to work, but let's say we're, we're sprinting and then we start walking, which means that this goes here and here. And then we start walking like that. Um, so in the switches here, we're going to put whatever we have. So let's say in walk, we need that one and walk and run to sprint like that. So Here we are. If I can uh, figure out how this is working, that would be nice. Uh, run to, there we go. So our walk switch here is only also going to be using the transition type and the default for walk will of course be walk, as you can see here. So if we are walking, it should play walk. But if we are any of the other ones, it should play walk to run or run to sprint. Which means that if we are actually walking and the other switch is also walking, it will play walk. But if it plays any of, if the, the movement type transition is any of the other two, then it will logically play the in-between ones. Um, let's try this as well here with the run switch. So we have, we need, Run, in run, of course. Run to sprint, and we need walk to run, like that. This is pretty rough. You you could you can figure it out. You you can make a lot of. Um, you also need transitions the other way. Like if you if you were running, if, well, if you are sprinting and then you start running, then you need a transition the other way where you're slowing down. In this case, we only have one where we speed up. Um, so. Here in the running switch, we will add the same one, transition type, and we are running. So if we're running, it will play the run. But if we're walking, or if we're sprinting, it will play the transition once. So, right now we are walking. And it's determining which one of these we are. So let's, let's get rid of these. Determining which one of these switches to trigger. And these, this switch determines which one of these containers to play. So if we are, now we're walking, if we start sprinting, which is 8.5, then it plays the transition ones in between, just for two seconds. Two seconds is a little long. It could also be just one second or something like that, so that you just have one one sample or one or two assets played in between. Um, we can actually try that. So movement transition type over here, we can say we only want it to happen for one second. The attack and release basically is uh, as, as the name describes it. So once the value is changed, how fast does it get to the other value? Once the value is at that, at what time will it then take to actually go there as well? Um, so we're now running. Let's say we go down to to no, we're sprinting now. If we go down to to running, it should be like this. And now I, I can't do it within one second. So now we're walking. And now we're running again. And this is a really smart way of using two RTBCs. In this case, I had to ask the programmer to add the RTBC, or if you have a logic system in your engine that allows you to create your own, that's fine. But this is, this is simply like a duplicate of a switch and I'm using just two RTPCs to control these two. And in this way, you can create a massive logic system with these switches to create 
the transitions that you need. You don't need the engine to tell you what did you just do or something like that, simply because, let's say, if programmers don't have time or there's no way for you to implement it or something like that, then you can play you can play with dual, dual RTPCs and several switches like this, and two RTPCs can control a lot of switches um, and help you logically determine what is your current state and what was your previous state, which is kind of a uh, kind of simple simple logic system but that's how dual rtpc switches work uh i hope you enjoyed this video uh don't forget to sign up on patreon and sign up here and subscribe and whatnot all that um the psycho babble about promotion um hopefully you enjoyed this and if you have any questions fire away in the comments box and i'll see you next time have a good one